Hello and welcome. This is Whistlekick Martial Arts Radio, episode 413. Today, we're talking about Gracie Jiu Jitsu. My name is Jeremy Lesniak, your host on the show, the founder at Whistlekick, and I love martial arts. Love it. Love it. Love it so much. I do this show twice a week. We bring you an interview on Mondays. We bring you a topic show like this one each Thursday. And you can learn more about the show at whistlekickmartialartsradio.com. You can subscribe through your podcast apps. You can check out what we do on YouTube. We've got a ton of stuff going on. And of course, you can find everything we've got going on at whistlekick.com. We've got some stuff over there you can buy. And if you use the code PODCAST15, you're going to save 15% off every single thing that we do. You can use that code all you want. You can sign up for the newsletter and find out about the new things that we've got going on. We've got some original content that comes out in those newsletters. We try to spread it out. We want you to check out all the things that we've got going on. So we try to incentivize you to do that. And if you're not on the newsletter list, you can sign up at any of our websites. And I hope you do, because that's the best way to stay clued in to what we're doing. If you want to learn about the world-renowned, the popular martial arts system that is generally referred to as Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu in one way or another, you really should know about the family who developed it. In fact, the Gracie family is so synonymous with Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu that sometimes it's referred to as Gracie Jiu-Jitsu because the Gracie family is the one who really promoted and developed Jiu-Jitsu in Brazil. Even though there is another lineage that emerged through someone else, Luis Franca. Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, or simply BJJ, has become very prominent in the world in no small part due to the Ultimate Fighting Championship, the UFC, since Hoist Gracie used the art to win three championships in 93 and 94. The art has also become one of the primary elements that most people include in their mixed martial arts curriculum or system because of its effective ground techniques. So today we're going to talk about how the Gracie or the Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu style came into existence. I'm sure many of you are curious about the history. Some of you may know some stuff about this. But we did some research, so listen, and let's talk more about it. So first off, when we say Gracie, who is, who is Gracie? What is this family name? Well, the Gracie family tree roots go back to George Gracie. George was born in Scotland, and he migrated to Brazil. He had a son named Pedro, who married Cesarina Pessoa Besoncelos. I am fairly confident I'm not getting that name right, but it's the best I'm going to be able to do, because I don't speak Portuguese. And this woman was a woman of high status. The couple had a son named Gustau, who later became a businessman and partnered with the American Circus in Belém, which is a city in Brazil. Now, in 1916, a Japanese judoka and prize fighter, Mitsuyo Meida, performed in the American Circus staged by the Keirolo brothers. Meida performed a demonstration once more in 1917 in De Paz, in the theater, where he was watched and observed by Carlos Gracie, the eldest son of Gastel Gracie. Carlos was impressed by Meta's techniques to defeat a much bigger man. And from that day forward, Carlos decided he wanted to learn jiu-jitsu. If you're unsure of the relationship between judo and jiu-jitsu, you might want to go back. We did an episode on judo, and we did a separate episode on the founder, Jigoro Kano. And you might find some value in those if you really are interested in this history. Meta, who was nicknamed Count Combat or Conde Coma in Spain, agreed to teach Carlos. However, about four years later, Gastão and his family were forced to return to Rio de Janeiro due to his father's death and financial difficulty at the same time. Now, this incident wasn't a hindrance for Carlos to continue learning jiu-jitsu. The local coaches in Rio de Janeiro also learned from Meta, and they taught Carlos and his brothers, Oswaldo, Gastão Jr., George, and Helio. From then on, the Gracie brothers embraced the art of judo, or jiu-jitsu, which was the term used by Meta. Carlos wasn't quite content with what he learned from Meta, so he decided he was going to devise a more effective version of jiu-jitsu. Now, according to reports, he participated in open matches and used this experience to create and refine his own system. Subsequently, as the eldest among his siblings, Carlos taught his own style of jiu-jitsu to his younger brothers. Helio the youngest among the siblings, grew up to be very athletic. His early sports were rowing and swimming, and he had just started to learn jiu-jitsu at the age of 16. However, during his training, he found it difficult to execute the techniques, even though he knew them theoretically, because of his relatively smaller physique. 
he experimented on the techniques and adjusted them to suit his own body. And eventually, this experimentation led to the development of, you may have guessed it, Gracie Jiu-Jitsu. After judo was introduced in Brazil, some of the rules were changed to better suit it as a spectator sport and to improve the sport's safety. Some of these changes included lesser range of joint locks and a de-emphasis of groundwork techniques. Now, BJJ, Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, on the other hand, doesn't follow these changes. And it makes it more of a grappling art, which, of course, it is. While BJJ looks similar to judo, especially to people who haven't trained in either, the contribution of the Gracies make it a more distinct art style by giving greater emphasis on full contact fighting. The main difference between BJJ and judo is that the former focuses on bringing the fight to the ground. If you've watched Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu practitioners in full contact fight, you see that this is quite often their strategy. Therefore, it employs many takedown techniques such as pulling guard, things that are prohibited in judo and even in most wrestling systems. The main objective is to gain the dominant position on the ground until a submission technique can be applied. Also, as the fight is mainly on the ground, striking techniques are not emphasized in BJJ. Have you ever rolled with someone and tried to punch them? It's kind of hard. The Gracies in general use the term Gracie Jiu-Jitsu to identify their own variation of Jiu-Jitsu, especially when they brought it to the United States. However, the first cousins, Carle and Horian, had a legal dispute over Gracie Jiu-Jitsu. In December 94, Carle filed a legal complaint against Horian because the latter claimed to have obtained a federal registration for Gracie Jiu-Jitsu, a service mark, a trademark. Because of this service mark, no other Gracies could use this name unless he approved it. Now, on November 19, 97, a jury actually said that Horian didn't have a valid federal service mark for Gracie Jiu-Jitsu, and it voided the mark that he had obtained. The Gracie family believed that their martial arts style was superior over all others, and this prompted Carlos Gracie to issue the first Gracie Challenge in the 1920s, which was a Valle Tudo, or Anything Goes, style match. The matches were usually set up between a smaller Gracie and a larger or stronger looking opponent. And due to the large percentage of wins from the Gracie family, the challenge became very popular. Some of the styles that their opponents used included judo, karate, wrestling, and boxing. And the success of these challenges allowed them to promote and further develop their martial art. One of the greatest adversaries the Gracies faced was Kazushi Sakuraba, who was dubbed the Gracie Hunter. And Sakuraba broke the Gracies' undefeated record in professional fighting by defeated Hoyler Gracie in Pride 8. Sakuraba won by technical knockout, TKO, using the double top wrist lock. Decades ago, a similar event happened, but to Hoyler's father, Helio. Prior to Sakuraba's win, the last Japanese athlete to defeat a Gracie was Mashashiko Kimura, who was hailed as one of the greatest judoka of all time. Helio was defeated by the very same judo technique that defeated Hoyler. It's like history repeating itself. It's hard to talk about Gracie Jiu-Jitsu, the Gracie family, and not talk about the UFC, the Ultimate Fighting Championship, because Horian Gracie is one of the founders of the UFC. He teamed up with the entrepreneur Art Davey, inspired by the success of the Gracie Challenge. Davey, on the other hand, was inspired by the Gracie's in Action video series produced by the Gracie family themselves, where Gracie Jiu-Jitsu students would beat martial artists of other disciplines. Davey wanted to create a tournament like that to determine which martial arts discipline was best. If you remember the early days of the UFC, you probably remember the way these fights were promoted. They were promoted as style versus style, not person versus person. Which was the better martial art we would find out in the octagon? Of course, things have changed, but it's important to understand the early days and why this was so important to the family. The first ever UFC tournament was held at McNichols Sports Arena in Denver, Colorado on November 12th, 93. It was an eight-man single elimination tournament participated in by kickboxers Patrick Smith and Kevin Rosier, savat fighter Gerard Gordeaux, karate expert Zane Fraser, shoot fighter Ken Shamrock, sumo wrestler Taylor Tooley, boxer Art Jimerson, and the Gracie family's very own 
Hoist Gracie, a black belt in their system. Hoist's participation was due to his older brother, Horian, who handpicked him to represent the family. Horian proved to be right in his decision as Hoist emerged victorious in the very first UFC tournament as champion. Not only that, Hoist also won the second and the fourth championships. At only 175 pounds, Hoist proved the effectiveness of Brazilian jiu-jitsu over larger, heavier, and stronger opponents. Fun fact, a little bit off script for the moment. One of the commentators at UFC 1 was friend of the show, personal friend, my kickboxing instructor, Bill Superfoot Wallace. It was from this early success that the Gracies had in UFC 1 that they were able to leverage their notoriety, their fame in spreading their martial art. Hoist's success turned into many Gracie Jiu-Jitsu or Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu martial arts schools throughout the United States. And while there is certainly variance from school to school, we can see these critical elements, this idea of bringing the fight to the ground in every version, at least every version I've experienced and it's seen. Even today, when we consider the marketing of Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu schools, most instructors try to claim some lineage to the Gracie family, no matter who the name is. And this has led to some problems, but of course, that's not uncommon when people claim lineage in the martial arts. Now is it. We've talked about a few of the notable Gracie family members, but here are some more. Roger, or in Portuguese, Roger. Gracie Gomez, grandson of Carlos Gracie through Helio Gracie, is the former one world cruiserweight, now light heavyweight champion. He won 10 times in the World Jiu-Jitsu Championship in various weight divisions from 2003 to 2010. He also won the ADCC South American Championship in 04 and twice the ADCC World Championship in 2005 for the Absolute and the 100 Kilo divisions. Cron Gracie, grandson of Helio, won the 2013 ADCC Submission Wrestling World Championship held in Beijing. Clark Gracie, grandson of Carlos, won the 2013 Pan American Championship in the middleweight division. And the most famous of the female Gracies, Kyra Gracie, great-granddaughter of Carlos, is one of only two Gracie women to achieve black belt in the system. She's also the first female Gracie to actively compete in the sport, having won the 2005, 2007, and 2011 ADCC Submission Fighting World Championships. She's also a four-time BJJ World Champion by winning the 2006, 2008, and 2010 IBJJF World Championships. Of course, there's more that you can say. There are books. There are a ton of podcasts. In fact, no other martial art has launched more commentary and content than Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu or Gracie Jiu-Jitsu, depending on how you choose to look at it. And for that reason, we don't spend a lot of time talking about it, but yet it's influenced the martial arts community, the world, so much. It's brought people into training that otherwise wouldn't. It's brought money and fame to an entire family and people who follow that system. And let's be honest, the UFC may not have happened without the Gracie family. And while we don't talk a lot about MMA on this show, there are people who have started training in martial arts because of mixed martial arts and the UFC. So personally, I thank them for that. If you head on over to whistlekickmartialartsradio.com, you can find a transcript, some links. I mentioned the past episodes we've done on Judo and Jigoro Kano. You can find those there as well. And if you head to whistlekick.com, you can use the code PODCAST15 to save 15% on everything that we sell, from shirts and uniforms to protective equipment and a whole bunch more stuff. If you're down to help us out, we'd really appreciate that, whether that be through making a purchase or you've got some free options. Leave us a review anywhere that you find podcasts. Apple Podcasts is the most important one for us. But of course, you can also leave us reviews on Google or on Facebook. You can share this episode or another episode with friends. How about the people in your school? Do they know about martial arts radio? Tell them. And you can follow us on social media. We are at Whistlekick on Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, and Instagram. If you want to email me directly, maybe you want to leave a private comment, go ahead, jeremy at whistlekick.com. I read all the emails. 
and I respond to almost all of them. That's all I've got for you today. Until next time, train hard, smile, and have a great day. 